What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here and welcome to Bass Tone Tuesday. Today I want to show you some of the tones that I just dialed in for a recording that I did with a couple of friends. Usually when I record I provide a couple of options so that a person mixing has something to choose from because depending on what he or she wants as a final result, you know, having those options definitely help. Now, this is kind of like a like a rock pop song. Um, it definitely got a modern edge, but still some, you know, I would definitely call it rock influences because I, first of all, I record with a pick and there's also some drive going on there. So let me show you what I used for the recordings and then we're gonna go to my computer so you can hear and see what I did and why I picked those sounds. For the recording, I used my Lakeland P bass. It's strong with nickel roundwound strings. And I also used a pick. Let me get that in focus. There we go. I used these Dunlop Max Grip picks because all the other picks <laughs> just slip from my hands but I used this bass and what's interesting is that I also used three different preamps now let me explain you why I used three different preamps I wanted to keep the tube vibe going that warmth that fatness of the Noble DI but I also wanted some edge on the top end because you know it's played with a pick and I wanted to to have some more presence there and the Noble naturally rolls off a bit top end when it's set flat and that is why I took the Mesa DI as well. So what I did was that I took or I plugged in first into the Mesa. Then from there I went into the Noble. From the Noble I took one XLR cable into my interface. So that was one signal path. And then from the Noble I took another signal and went into the Douglas to record the drive section. That way I have two signals, one clean and one distorted, and on the clean signal, it didn't boost anything, just a tiny, tiny bit of bass boost maybe, um, but nothing major, just to keep one consistent clean track. And that gave me a bit more definition than if I was to just plug in directly in the Noble. And it also gave me the ability to keep the tube tone also going into the Darkless pedal. Now let me show you how that sounds like. So we're gonna switch camera angles and then you're gonna also see my computer and hear what I recorded. Okay guys, so now this is my screen and this is Logic Pro 10. And this is a track that I recorded or well, this is the backing track without the bass. That's the intro, chorus, groove, or riff. This is the verse. And then pretty much repeats itself until the very end. That's kind of like the bridge, right? So, let me show you what I recorded. I've got two tracks here, when bass DI clean and bass drive, but there's two options of this one and also two options of this one. So let me solo first the DI track and to show you what I have, this is the DI track and all I have here on the plugin chain is a slight high pass filter at 30 hertz that's it just to remove some rumble and here this plug right here is a cap simulation and i have a subway or a mesa subway uh, cap at 115 which is the same cap that i own so i wanted to show or send the signal that i hear also kind of in my room without having to use a mic and let me show you how it sounds on its own, just the clean DI and then also with the cap sim. 
So I'm going to loop this section. Right, there's a clean DI, and I'm going to turn on the CapSim. Without. With. Now I'm going to show you how those two sounds sound like in the mix. First, without. So it's not a massive difference, but the capsin does tame a little bit of the harshness of the pick. And let me do show you again that thing in the verse. Let's look four bars. With. Without. It's not a massive difference, but there's definitely a subtle change in the tone right there. Now, for the drive part of the sound, that's when it gets interesting because I also have a cap simulation going and also some different. I mean, I have a high pass filter set at where the it is at 30 hertz as well, and a low pass filter set at. 10k and it's not doing much you just have it there as safety measure right but let me show you how it sounds like when i don't have a cap simulation this is the chorus on its own just the bass let's hear that in the mix It is not like super aggressive or like, I mean, there are definitely a lot more aggressive types of distortion, even without the capsim. Once it's blended in, in the mix correctly, you don't really hear that as a, like a super bitey overdrive. Right, it's just there to thicken things up a little bit. Now let me put on the cap simulation. But first I want to show you what's inside of this. Now I have two cabinets here. And I provided those two examples. Um, the first one is the same as the, as the previous cab, my Mesa Subway 15, but with different mic. And the one on the right is a Mesa Powerhouse cab. So this one is a 115, and this is a 115 plus a 4 by 10. So it's a different character. Let me show you how the uh, the powerhouse sounds like. Let me turn this on. Turn it off. It definitely, it changes the sound quite drastically. Now let's hear how that sounds like in the mix so first without with There's a dif difference in volume, I would have to uh, dial that in, but the sound changes quite considerably. Now let's listen to the 115. 
the first on its own. Without. But it's very different, so let's hear that in the mix. Personally, I really like how that 115 gap sounds like. It blends very nicely with the drums and the guitars, I find. Now let's hear how both of those sound against each other. Let me just solo the bass. Very kind of tricky. The 15 is definitely more tame on the top end, the 1 or the 410, the powerhouse cab is definitely more bitey. And I decided to provide those two sounds so that the uh, mixing engineer can decide what kind of sound he wants to have, especially on the last part of, of the bridge. So let me go to that section. This is the 15 cab. <laughs> Right? So by having those four options, you know, the clean the eye track, which is either with the cap or without, and those two drives uh, tracks, then the mixing engineer can pick what works the best after also all the extra layers come in the mix as well, because then there's vocals coming. I have the vocals here, but I don't want to show it. Uh, you know, there's vocals, there's some more stuff, there's more synth layers. So with those options, the mixing engineer can pick what suits best for the track. And even if he just ends up taking the DI track, he can then apply some plugins on that to morph it into something else. If, you know, my versions of the drive and whatnot didn't work uh, like he wanted. So I'm pretty happy with the result. I know the mixing guy is also pretty happy with the result. So I'm going to show you, there's going to be on the channel, the, the, this song. So stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to show you how I would go about something like this and the type of tones that I would dial in for this. It's nothing like super crazy, as you could hear, there's not like a lot of EQing happening. Like I said, on the DIs, it was set flat um, and all is just hand positioning. And then here on the caps, all I did was maybe test different microphones and that was it. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content that's coming to your channel. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.